Hello and welcome to this demonstrational video here at MB Motorhomes. This time we're immensely proud to say that it's the Heimer Grand Canyon S 4x4. Uh, so this is the first customer to pick one up from us, so uh, we're really happy to be presenting this, this fantastic motorhome. So I'll ro uh, run through the outside controls first as always and then uh, we'll move on to the inside. Okay, so this has got the pop top roof which we'll, we'll come to in a second, but first things first. Uh, opening the bonnet, the bonnet release catch is just here inside the uh, passenger door um, footwell. The toolkit uh, is underneath this uh, footwell as well. Um, while we're here, we'll just discuss the darkening blinds for the windscreen and the side window. So, what you do is you pinch these two clips here together, draw that across. And that's the darkening blind for the side windows. Very similar principle on the windscreen. Pinch these two together, draw that across, and the corresponding side has a magnetic strip which joins onto this one, and that allows you to darken off the windscreen. As you'll see, there's a mechanism there to allow for that section um, to darken off your blind. So, as I say, there's a magnetic strip uh, here which joins those together. Um, when you pull these back, just ensure that they're correctly clipped in uh, into here. Clearly, if this, if you're driving and cornering hard, and this slides across with inertia, uh, it's going to blank off the view that the driver or passenger has, which is uh, not ideal. Okay, similar with this one, just draw it across straight, like so, and just ensure that it's uh, neatly clipped back in. Otherwise, you could get that sliding across uh, as you're traveling. While we're here, uh, the fueling of the vehicle is here. So that's where your diesel fuel goes into. Clearly not to be mistaken uh, with water, as has happened uh, a few times. But uh, that's, that's the diesel fuel. Okay, so underneath the bonnet then. The... Bonnet release catch is about there, so if you pull that up and then the arm for retaining the bonnet in the upright position is just there. Okay, so uh, the, it clips into this section just here, so that's how you keep the bonnet up. Under here, uh, you see the impressive Mercedes engine there. We've got the uh, brake fluid container, uh, coolant. This model doesn't have a dipstick, it's all done via the engine computer. Uh, so on the controls there, it'll tell you if the when the oil needs changing and also if you've got low uh, oil level or indeed high level. The AdBlue additive that is required to pass the emissions tests is added here underneath the bonnet. Um, again, it will tell you on the, on the dashboard when that is required. You've got the oil fill just here, so that's where oil is added, and then your washer fluid is put into here. If you are in the unfortunate position of needing to jump start the vehicle, then the positive terminal goes onto this here. So your red cable goes onto that there. So if you push that back, it reveals a metal reveal, and then your um, alligator clip or uh, the jump pack clips onto there. So that's the red cable the positive and then your black cable which is the earth goes onto this one here so black cable on there red cable onto here okay so I'll continue on around the motorhome in a methodical manner as I can and um, the first thing you'll notice here it, this is a, an exhaust for the boiler so whenever the boiler is um, on basically particularly if you're using the diesel fuel as it uses you'll see the exhaust uh, being emitted from here. So it's uh, perfectly normal to see that. You'll see steam rising from it in cold weather. It's just condensation arising from the natural uh, burning of the fuel on the, um, on the heater. Next one along is the toilet cassette. So whatever goes down the toilet ends up in a cassette. Uh, you, do, you, you need two hands to open that, by the way. So um, ends up in a cassette, which is contained uh, in here. So there's an indication on the actual toilet to tell you how full and when it needs emptying. Uh, to release this, what you do is you lift up this little tab here, slide the cassette out, 
and then this being full of toilet waste would require emptying to empty that what you do is slide this nozzle forward unscrew the cap off the end like so this also doubles up as a measuring cup for when you're adding the chemical into this which will become clear in a second and with the cap off turn the cassette upside down and pour away as you're pouring away press this button in here that lets air in as the um, liquid is pouring out of this side you add the chemical into this cassette which breaks down all the solids and gets rid of all the smells to do that you slide this back and open up the uh, it's called a blade so that opens up you put the required amount of chemical into here either blue which is uh, we've quite you, you the blue chemical uh, you, you do need to put that down a, a designated waste point if you use the green chemical it's biodegradable and therefore can in theory be, be disposed of anywhere uh, when you've entered it uh, for the first time what I would tend to do is fill it back up with fresh water squill it around and then empty it again and then and then add the chemical so that you know you've got rid of any residue okay so to put it back in position make sure the blade is closed and this is facing the correct way slide the cover back over and then it's ready to put back in once you've put the nozzle back in position you'll see on the bottom of here it's actually got wheels to aid um, you wheeling it over to the disposal point really and then this is an extendable handle on the top here it just unclips it's just a bit hard to do it with one hand so you th this this uh, unclips and extends off so that you can wheel it over to the disposal point so the way that's done is you push this handle down that way and then you can see you can wheel it over to the disposal point more easily just make sure that the handles back in its housing clipped in uh, before you put it back into the into the motor so to put it back in handle on the top here slide it back into its housing ensuring that that clip is uh, looks like that basically so that it's uh, is clipped in and then that sits underneath the actual toilet bowl itself and um, that'll become a bit more clear when we go inside so the hatch is lockable um, and that's the, that's the toilet waste next one along is where the mains electric feed comes into the motorhome um, basically what happens is the cable looks like this you lift the lid up like that and it goes into a recess inside there so the, the handle or the lid rather goes on a, a sort of 90 degree angle like that push it in and to release it there's a little um, lever there you push that down and pull the cable out at the same time that allows you to release the main supply okay on around to the back then there's uh, I've got the pack out here so I'll explain what comes with it you probably see I've got the foldable chairs out there uh, they um, sit into this uh, pocket here and then this strap keeps them in position we've got the main book pack with the very handy and uh, with the very handy and well indexed um, instruction manual so it's straightforward to use that if you are struggling then refer to that it is very good uh, in here we've just got a chock uh, to prevent rolling of the vehicle's pegs for the awning legs we've got the um, shower tray some some of the brackets that aren't really required for the installation of the awning but they that's what they are if you were wondering what they were this is a puncher repair kit should you be unfortunate enough to get a puncher that's the uh, kit for that there is a sample of toilet chemical which i referred to earlier when displaying the cassette toilet cassette warning triangle and um, again some of the bits and bobs that were weren't required for uh, the fitment of the awning but they include them uh, medical kit um, handy binder that they just provide and then the instruction manual for the Mercedes the table for the table and chair set is here okay so while we're around here there's some things we need to talk about so first things first behind this panel here is the fuse box okay so you've got a 12 volt fuse box which um, if for example the water pump or the lighting circuit becomes faulty 
each individual um, circuit has its own fuse they are labeled in the instruction manual if you ever need to um, change one of those fuses we can we are in a position to help but they are labeled so uh, they're cross-referenced in the manual and also labeled the power inverter is here but the, there's a switch for that on the inside the main thing you need to know about in here is the fact that the fuses are there okay next to that we've got the gas locker um, this customer has asked us to fit a gas bottle for them it doesn't come with one but we fitted this for them um, so this flexible hose here um, comes off this which is a regulator that regulates the pressure that's coming out of this bottle here you switch the gas supply on via the tap on top of the bottle here and then if you need to change the bottle or use a different gas system this wheel here this black wheel you turn that clockwise to untighten it so it's reverse thread okay so clockwise to untighten it and to clockwise to tighten it up there is another uh, tap just there behind that black uh, section which you can switch the gas supply on and off there, but it's just easier to do it via this When you first switch the gas supply on it it stands to reason that it's going to take some time for the gas to travel through the pipe work and eventually reach the relevant Appliance which then will use the gas fuel All these switches here you just push them in to keep them secure In this area here to lower the bed down um, this plastic section that you can see here slides out this way okay so it's like um, it's like a cross section so I'll just try and do it with the front of my hand so if you slide that section out it allows then this to fall down so that's the base for the for the rear bed across the back so the bed base comes in two sections you've got this one here the one at the front the catch for the one at the front is just here so you can see how this is in two sections and then the mattresses uh, neatly fold up and then you unravel those and that creates your bed underneath this panel here which pulls out is where the water tank is housed okay so this is the water tank and um, it's it's very important that any water um, isn't left in the motorhome particularly in freezing conditions whenever you're not using the motorhome basically drain the water from it so this is where the water tank is positioned uh, it means that it's insulated when you've got the heating on and the way that you drain this tank down is to turn this nozzle here this one here anti-clockwise now it has a system where you can drain it down to 20 litres the reason for that is it's easier to calculate the weight that you carry in because 20 litres is uh, 20 kilos okay so to drain that down to the 20 litre mark what you do is turn this nozzle slowly until you feel it click once it's clicked that means you're down to the 20 litre mark what you then do is further turn it but only do it maybe two revolutions don't don't turn it all the way out because what happens is there's a threaded um rod that goes into a plug in the bottom of the um in the bottom of the tank so if you fully unwind this what it's doing is pulling this rod out eventually it'll pop out and the thread comes out so only turn it two revolutions beyond the click to retain all the water within the tank in the usable position this has got to be closed so pass the click and then just finger tight don't over tighten it just wait until you sort of feel it the thread grip and then you know that the the water tank is um, closed basically the valve is closed and it's ready to use This motorhome is fitted with a reverse camera. The reverse camera lens is mounted just there. The awning winder pole is here. We have got a separate video on how to operate the awning, so I'm, I'm not going to go into that, but that's where the awning winder is housed. Um, and the awning on the side here. So the winder goes into this end here, but uh, I will include a separate video uh, for this particular customer on, on how to operate uh, how to operate the awning 
All right, so moving on around the motorhome, it stands to reason we've just been talking about the fresh water tank there. This is where it's filled. So again, you just need a key for that. So what you've got is the two Mercedes keys and the Heimer key. So the Heimer key will fit into this. Um, what you've got to do with this is su su support this section here and then turn the, the um, barrel within that. So again, a bit tricky with one hand, but you can see how the barrel's turning, but it, it, sometimes you can turn the key and it turns the whole thing. You, you've, in order to unlock it, you've actually got to turn the barrel independently of the um, cap itself. To open it, you just push it in and turn it, put a hose pipe into here, literally until water pours out. There is an indication on the control panel to tell you how full that is, but if you want to fill it completely, just you, you, there's no danger in you just putting the hose pipe in and filling it until it pours out. On most sites, they have uh, where the water filler section is, uh, a length of hose that you can just put into there. It might be worth having your own small section of uh, domestic hose to um, to fill that, but on the vast majority of sites, they've got a length of hose that will allow you to fill this. Okay, we're nearly at the most exciting bit inside the motorhome now. The um, the heating can the heating outlets are um, like butterfly va butterfly valves like these here. So the heating comes out of these, and you can adjust the amount of air that's coming out of them by uh, adjusting the butterfly valve. The step is an electric step, and is controlled via this switch here. There's also a switch on the dash that if you forget to bring the step in. You can bring the step in uh, while you're in the driving position to prevent you having to walk back round and uh, adjust that switch there. There's light switch that light switches that are here. One of those is for the awning light outside, so you can see the uh, awning strip light just there, and that's operated via these here. Okay, so on into the motorhome then. The main control panel for uh, the vehicle, or the motorhome, is this digital control panel here. To wake that up, just give it a press. So you've got some basic information as soon as you start this up. We know the vehicle battery is at 14.9, now that's because we're plugged in. Um, if I was to unplug the vehicle now, that would probably, uh, probably drop somewhat. Main battery is 100% charged. We haven't got any fresh water, and the grey water is showing at 25%. The readings on the water levels aren't deadly accurate. They, they're not like a fuel gauge where it will give you a, a, a very quick and accurate fix on the, on the levels of the water. If it's within 25%, um, that's probably about as accurate as it's intended to be. You switch the whole 12 volt circuit on by pressing that button there. We've got an indication to say that we are plugged into mains. That button there switches on your water pump. So, with regard to the water pump, in order to get water out of your tap, you need that to be switched on. When you first fill up with water, you've got to pump the water from the tank through the system, fill up the water boiler, and then eventually it'll come out of your tap. So, what you do is switch that button on there, Come over to your kitchen tap, put it onto hot, which is this way, lift up the lever, wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of your tap. What that means is you've purged all the air out of the boiler through all the pipe work and the boiler is then ready to switch on. There's no point switching your boiler on until you've done this process because you're just heating thin air in the boiler. So back to the control panel then. There's various things that you can do with this. When you can switch the lights on and off from here, you can switch the fridge on and off, adjust the brightness and uh, temperature of the, of the lights. Switch the lighting on. Okay, so you can actually um, change the settings for the boiler here. Um, but I'm going to show you on the actual boiler control panel itself how to operate that. 
the information that's on here uh, is duplicated on the actual boiler control panel itself so rather than go through it here I'm going to do that on the actual boiler control panel which it has its own separate control panel with this control panel it's possible to speak to it from your phone via the app um, we've got all the uh, there's a QR what you do is you enter a QR code into the app it has got specific information which relates to this particular vehicle and allows and allows you to speak to this control panel via the app okay so I'll show you where the boiler control panel is and it's just here so these these cupboards behind this cupboard here which are closed again by these push in push out locks this is the Truma control panel so again to wake this up give a press on this wheel here okay all right so the first one there is showing the temperature of your that you require the motor to be so if you press the wheel in It'll allow you to adjust the temperature by scrolling through on the wheel like so, okay? It's a hot day today, so I don't want the heating to become active. The next one along is the water temperature, okay? So for showering and uh, washing up, etc. So you select that. You've either got eco at 40 degrees, hot at 60 degrees, boost. The boost setting, what that does is it draws all the power from the heating of the motorhome and allocates it to heating of the water. So rather than, um, it, it basically steals the power from the heating of your, of your motorhome and allocates it to the water. So if you want a lot of hot water, very quickly stick it on boost. Otherwise, what I would tend to do is probably leave this on hot and then mix it with cold water so you get an ample supply of warm water. The next one along is your power supply so you can select which power source you want to utilize here we're just using electric on 1800 watts the reason that they give you this choice is because if you're on a site particularly in europe they are low ampage sites so what it means is you you can select a lower um a lower wattage on here and it won't blow the fuse on the side okay so you've got electric on basically nearly two kilowatts electric on one kilowatt a mix of fuel so it uses diesel fuel and two kilowatt electric a mix of fuel and one kilowatt electric fuel only if you choose to use the diesel fuel um, which you know off grid perfect for that um, you do need to just make sure that you, your fuel tank isn't on reserve if it's on reserve it tends to fault because it uh, it's it's a fail safe to stop you running out of uh, fuel the next one along is just your fan setting now you don't really need to go into that if you set your temperature here the fan will run at a speed according to the temperature it needs to reach if you don't select any heat in your motorhome, so let's go back to the temperature here, switch this off, then go to the fan setting, you can switch it to vent, so it'll just uh, vent air around the motorhome. <clears throat> We've got an indication here to tell us that we're plugged into mains, that is essential if you're going to select uh, electric. So if that's missing, then there's a there's an issue and you need to um, plug in, basically, and check the fuse on the sight end of the cable. You can set your timer to come on and off at a certain time. You can set the clock there, and there's a settings menu. I'm not going to go into the settings menu. It's explained in the, in the manual. Shouldn't need to, really, but, um, yeah, the, 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 that's your settings menu. It is important with this, and it's one of the most important things and probably one of the uh, most common calls that we get. Switch all this off before you disconnect your electric. If you suddenly disconnect your electric, it goes into fail mode. Um, and then there's a, a process that you need to go through to get it, get it back uh, operational again. So the quickest and easiest way to prevent all that is to just switch this off before you unplug. And you switch it off by a long press in the centre of the wheel. Keep it pressed in, off. 
to switch it back on it's the same thing in reverse just put long, a long press on here this switches the power inverter on so you're changing from uh, DC to AC current so mains elect you're changing the battery into mains electric basically that's got to be switched on in order for um, that to be functional basically the reason that they let you switch it off is so you don't discharge your battery unnecessarily okay we've got a fold-up table here um, fairly straightforward it, it, it just folds up uh, and has got a leg uh, that supports it sort of a diagonal leg there and um, the underneath this seat here so in, a, in accordance with the boiler controls being there the boiler itself is beneath the seat here so just going back to the importance of draining water out of the vehicle if it's not in use we've got a drain valve here okay so this drains the water out of the boiler and it's probably the most important bit of the whole video of this if, if you leave water in the boiler and it freezes it will uh, stay within the pipes here that expand crack the pipes maybe crack the boiler so this is thermostatic what it will do is if it reaches six degrees uh, it will automatically uh, drop all the water out of the boiler provided that the boiler isn't switched on okay so if the boiler switched on it will never uh, drop all the water that is now open and will drop all the water out of the boiler onto the floor in order to get the boiler operational and usable you've got to turn this nozzle that way and press the button on the front okay so if you come to this and you try and get water through your hot water tap and it's freezing cold the chances are this is just going to drop all the water out of the boiler and you won't be able to use your tap okay so that's the thermostatic valve there and again if you're not going to use this for any length of time particularly in cold weather make sure that the this looks like that there is also another drain um, just under on the floor here there's two taps oh well you can see that on the video but just in there there's two taps open those up what it does it drains the excess out of any of the pipe work and means that there's no uh, dribbles left in the, uh, in the in the pipes basically uh, that could freeze when you're not using the motome and uh, prevent it from damaging the pipe work what you also need to do to drain it down is open up your taps so open up the tap so that it's open it's letting air in as the water's coming out of the bottom of the motome do the same there and also in the bathroom as well okay so the fridge is a compressor fridge um, what that means is it, it works off 12 volts and it's got a compressor to switch it on and off it's this button here again I don't know how well this is being picked up but it's a long press on that section there and it switches the fridge on off to switch it back on it's the same thing in reverse this here is your temperature control so if, let's say you're in a massively hot environment you want the fridge to work harder then have it at the top on a day like today where it's 13 degrees probably just need it in the middle uh, and then, then there's a there's another control just here and um, what this does is it's, it's a night setting so if you press that and hold it it quietens the fridge for night use so the fridge maybe just doesn't work quite as hard and uh, it makes it less noisy basically for, for night mode probably see the things just illuminated there I was struggling uh, to use this because it, it's still got the film on it I'm not going to take that off because it's nice to have the uh, film on the, on the on new purchases okay uh, on to the bathroom then um, the sink is used via pulling this down here and then the water can actually just flow into this and then just underneath there you probably can't see it but there's a plug there so whatever goes into here ends up flowing down into the um, into the plug there um, for showering if you do use this for showering this nozzle pulls out of there and then what they provide you with 
is this holder here which then can be stuck onto the mirror um, and that holds the um, nozzle in position they also give you a more magnified mirror which is just in this little box which is here there's a main socket in there and your light switch is just just there they do give you hanging space in here for wet garments so if you have been out walking you've got wet coats hang them on there and they can dry drip dry into uh, into the shower tray the toilet uh, basically how to use this is lift the lid this section here slide that around like that and it opens this blade so the blade I talked about on the actual uh, cassette is directly connected to the underside of this bowl so open and close make sure it's open use the loo and then the flush button is that blue button just there so that flushes uh, the water around and then when you're finished close that back up and um, ensure that's closed back up because if you're traveling uh, you don't want the contents of the um, toilet cassette maybe sloshing around in there there's an indication how full the cassette toilet is on these illuminated displays here so it'll, it'll creep up but you can actually see if you use the bright blue chemical you can actually see um, into there the duct board for the shower uh, probably just need to well you do need to remove that for showering and then the curtain that we talked about at the back can be retained on these clips here okay just one more thing to show you uh, inside here there's a there's a circuit breaker just in this cupboard underneath the bed so what that is is like a domestic circuit breaker that you would get at home let's say you switch the kettle on and all the electrics go off like your circuit breaker at home it, there's there's like a blue f uh, thing that flips up and down um, it basically switches off the um, electric supply to the motor as a protection okay so in the front here the roof the pop top roof has got this panel on you take this panel off just with the press studs under here under the canvas and the handles there Let's see. those black handles if you pull those in towards this handle like so that's how the roof is released so you need two hands one on that side one on this side and then what i tend to do is this band here i'll hold on to that while the roof is going up it's it's on sort of um hydraulic struts so when you when you undo those you reach up and undo those the roof when you push it up it wants to open really fast so you, you can slow it down with this but there's no problem with with letting it go go up and then to bring the roof back down you just simply pull on these handles here you've got to ensure that this fabric is in in the motor and you don't want the roof going down onto this fabric and trapping it and when the roof's up uh, you can actually see that how the fabric's being brought in and tucked in here so tuck this fabric in when you when you're bringing the roof down just to ensure that it doesn't get trapped and damage the fabric okay to swivel the seats around what you do is so both these seats will swivel around it's the catch just here so if you slide that across and push the seat uh, it will allow the seat to swivel around sometimes to get it to go around past the door card you do need a bit of sort of in and out motion to 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 make it go all the way around and then um, be pointing in the rear direction just outside the motor here again the ladder for the for the bed uh, is it comes in two parts you can see it's like a sort of telescopic section this bit here goes into the profile of this bit here and they join together uh, you can see there's a clip just here that this handle clips onto to secure those together and make it into into one piece okay so your ladder ends up looking like that you can see how they clip over to make it one piece your feet go on the floor and then those hooks uh, go into the uh, bed section once it's opened up okay that concludes most of the major controls that you'll need to know about to use the motorhome 
I'm sure there may be some questions that need answering uh, perhaps on the day that you collect or indeed before which I'm happy to do so but I hope that covers most of the controls for you makes it clear and uh, we very much look forward to seeing you on the day that you collect this brand new Heimer Grand Canyon S 4x4